Welcome to the Viking Age Podcast, the official podcast of the VikingAge.com. My name is Chris Shedd. I'm a writer for Viking Age Zone Coverage, Bring Me the News, and the Brookings Register. My co-host is Adam Patrick, the managing editor of the Viking Age. And we do this every Monday with a late week episode right here on the Viking Age YouTube channel. We're also in podcast form on Apple and Spotify the very next day. But however you consume us, make sure you rate, comment, like, and subscribe so you never miss a new episode and we can spread the word to the masses today's show is going to be in two parts first we're going to talk some vikings we're going to talk some possible draft targets we're going to talk a hypothetical trade and the second part two i'm nights. not gonna what's that two nights two nights I, i'm not going to uh reveal what we're doing in the second part actually if you log in on from twitter you know what it is but uh we're gonna have a mystery guest join us so uh stay tuned for that but before we do all that, we want the smoke. We want the draft smoke. And there's plenty coming from the Minnesota Vikings right now, especially when it comes to the name Michael Penix Jr. A report from Bleacher Reports' Jordan Schultz says things are heating up for the Washington quarterback. Sources said he had dinner with the Giants in Seattle after his pro day and a private workout with the Vikings in Seattle I don't think it was directly afterward because that would have been like a bad idea. Like, you know, go get the steak and like mm -hmm. the lobster and everything. And then, oh, he's throwing up on the side of the field. This isn't great. Uh, <laughs> Penix will also have several top 30 visits with teams along the league. Um, is this a smoke screen due diligence or an actual thing for the Vikings? Um, I don't think they'd waste their time. Uh, doing a private workout if they didn't have s some sort of interest in him. Um, love you too. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dustin um, Roberts says, seriously, love this podcast in the Viking age for a podcast audience. But go ahead, Adam. Yeah, I don't think they would bring him in if they didn't have some sort of, you know, legitimate interest in him. Not even bring him in, just hold a private workout um, and waste their time with any of that because I don't think they did that with, what, Bo Nix. Um I don't think they did it with Caleb Williams. I mean, they probably just, they would if they thought they had a chance with him. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they did that with Jaden Daniels either. They might've met with him at his pro day, but I don't think they held a private workout. Um, I think Drake May's on, he's on schedule or whatever to have a, a private workout for, for the Vikings coming up. If he hasn't had one already. Uh, and JJ McCarthy's already had one, um, which was, I, I guess like a multi-day thing. So it seems like, they like him. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, the cons conspiracy theorist and everyone could just be like, yeah, they're just doing this to throw people off and, you know, force other teams to trade up or, you know, get all that stuff going before the draft gets in. Cause it's, it's, it's a game. It's a game of chess. It's a game of, you know, some people play checkers. Uh, some people play chess when it comes to the draft. Um, and the Vikings are trying to just, you know, I feel like just cover all their all their bases, um, and especially because they haven't executed a trade yet to move up to four or three, or two or five. Like, and there's there's no guarantee. As much as we like to, to say, like, oh, the Vikings have two first round picks. That's it. They're guaranteed to move up. It hasn't happened yet. Um, and you know the history of this franchise says definitely says you know nothing is guaranteed. So. Um, it's smart of them to to work out a quarterback like Penix, who could still be on the board when it comes time. You know, if they're still on the on the clock at eleven, or even twenty three, I think I I don't think he'll be on the board by twenty three. I think he'll be gone by then. Um, really? Well, because you got the Broncos and you got the Raiders too. Like, I've seen some things about the Rams being interested in a quarterback because Matthew Stafford's getting up there in age too. Yeah, I don't think he'll be there at twenty three. Um, Hmm. So, I'm fine with them doing all this stuff, but I'm still a little hesitant on 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 Penix because of his injury history. I just, I just really just, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. Like, I don't care if he's good this year. He was fine last year. It's still there. It's still like ACL injuries are not. It's not a broken bone. It can happen very easily again. I know technology or science, or whatever, is way better than it, it used to be. But uh, it still, still should be a concern. I want to kind of go, b before I really dive into this, I want to kind of go back and do, he might not be available at 23. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think you're right. 
because this isn't like a normal draft for the top five quarterbacks. Like, you know, you get to number five and it's Kellen Mond, right? Right, right, right. right. You know, th- all five of these quarterbacks, you can look at them and be like, they have first round traits. You know, Caleb Williams, obviously the number one pick. Um, Drake May, lots of tools, lots of traits. We had Ian Cummings on Friday. He yep. talked about how he believes Drake May is his top quarterback in the draft. Yep. Very close, by the way, if you're sitting there going like, hey, wait a minute. No, no, it was <laughs> it was very close, he said. Yep. But he said that he liked May because of his upside. Uh, Jaden Daniels, also probably a top three pick in this draft. And then you have J.J. McCarthy, who he will go in the top five. I do not think he's getting past the Giants. Giants might be pumping out their own smoke screen with the whole quarterback thing just because they could really use a receiver too. So yes. if, if like, say the Vikings are like, oh, my God, the Giants are going to get J.J. McCarthy or, like, my conspiracy theory, Jim Harbaugh is going to take uh, J.J. McCarthy <laughs> for the Chargers, they'll trade with the Cardinals. Marvin Harrison falls down the board, and maybe the Chargers still trade down, and the Giants say, Thank you very much. We'll take Marvin Harrison or Roma Dunze or whoever that receiver is. Um, the rest of the, I, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think teams are going to leap the Vikings from 11 to go get Michael Penix. I don't think it's that drastic, but I could definitely see Michael Penix going 16, 17, like late teens. Mm-hmm. Like, do you think that's his floor or do you think, you know, maybe he falls Third late first round, that 32nd pick, the whole Teddy Bridgewater thing over yeah. again. And Lamar Jackson. Um yeah. I'm looking at the draft order right now, and uh I'm just gonna say let's say the Vikings don't trade up there at eleven and the Giants, the Giants go with JJ McCarthy or something. Um, I just saw something today where the Jets are willing to trade back there at pick ten. So if somebody really wanted, you know, they're like, okay, McCarthy, May, Daniels, and, and Williams are off the board, like, but we need a quarterback. We need to trade up. So they could and they, they look at the Vikings and they're like, Oh, they're gonna they're probably gonna take, you know, Michael Penix if he's still there. So I could see a team, you know, you said they, they might not leap the Vikings, but I could I could see a team trading to with the Jets pick ten to to get Penix. Um you got the Broncos at twelve right behind the Vikings, the Raiders at thirteen, the Saints. At 14, um, the Seahawks at 16, the Rams at 19, Steelers at 20. Like, these are all teams that could potentially um, draft Michael Penix this year um, because a lot of those teams could just draft him and have him sit for a year. Um, So, yeah, I I, I don't know. Is he – is it more like – the Will Levis thing last year where towards the end, towards the, you know, closer to the draft we got, people were like, oh, he's going to be top five. He, he could be even go number one. And then he went second round. Or is it, is it like Teddy Bridgewater? Is it like Lamar Jackson um, or Jordan Love where like there's, we hear teams like this guy and they brought him in for workouts, but you know, he's, he's not going to be top 10, but maybe, you know, a team trades up in 15 or whatever, like you said, and, and gets him. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know yet with Penix, um, so I'm curious to see how that goes. My thing with Penix is, you know, I just tweeted this out before I came on the air. Like, drafting Penix would just be like socks for Christmas. Not like as an adult. <laughs> as an adult, socks for Christmas, that, oh, yeah. that is like the best Christmas. Socks and underwear, man, because, <laughs> like, you don't want to buy that shit. So if somebody else is willing to buy it for you, go for it. Although, I mean, you can buy stuff on Amazon to- now nobody's gonna see it anyways right 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 but i mean yeah underwear would be a little bit weird here's some underwear Mm. yes self self self-checkout they should have a class for self-checkout by the way i'm so envious of like people who have self-checkout now because all the stuff that i bought when i was younger i had to like go to the cash register and the the cashier would like try to have a conversation with me and be like i'm not trying to talk i know you worked at quick trip and stuff so you were probably were you a cashier at all there? Did you run the register? Uh, I was when I started there, and then I became like old and grizzled because right, I right. just got sick of people. Yeah. But, yeah. So like, I'm like, I don't want. I just want to buy this. I don't want to have a conversation with you. So, so I love self checkout, but I'm I'm envious of the people that never had to. We do that. we used to have a guy. I, I'll I'll tell, share this story. We used to have a guy who would just stand up there and talk and have like five minute conversations with people, and like the quick trip I was at 
was super busy like all the time because you had male employees, you had mm. people who were like just trying to go get high or like, you know, go smoke black and milds or whatever. <laughs> and um, they would like line up and he'd be sitting there and it's like, hey, pretty lady, how are you doing today? And like, she's like missing teeth and shit because she's like, yeah. So, and like, I'm sitting there like, dude, I have shit to do. Like, you need to shut the hell up so I can like, Stock milk so people don't yell at me because of milk. Is, hey, pretty lady, I need some help up here. This is just turning into a big therapy session for me. The end, it did not end well. At all. Well, like, uh, go get your shit there though, like your all yeah. that stuff. But where, um, you know, if I, if I would like buy flowers for my wife or something, the cashier would be like, Oh, what are you doing? And I'd be like, Um, nothing. Actually, she's really mad and left. Why? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> My love, he flipped me. Um, that'll be nine ninety nine. Um, but like I was saying, like Pinnix would just be a letdown. I feel like because, like, I don't know. Like, like you said, when they made that trade to get the second first round pick, everybody was like, they are serious about getting a quarterback. They want to move up. They want to get their guy. And I think a lot of Vikings fans were on board with that. If the Vikings were to stay at 11, they just said, ah, it's too much, too pricey. And we'll talk about some scenarios a little bit later. If they look at that and they decide it's too much, you know, I would be happy with Byron Murphy at 11. Like I've wanted a badass shit wrecker in the trenches for a long time on this defense. And that guy is pretty good. The only problem is, okay, are, are you taking Pinnix? And like you said, you know, I, I think I think there's enough there with Penix that the Vikings would be totally fine if they took him. He's got a great arm. His numbers under pressure. You know, everybody flips on the Michigan tape and be like, dude, this guy's a wreck. Well, his numbers under pressure were actually better when he was under pressure than in a clean pocket, especially big time throw rate, which means he's willing to attack. You're not going to have the yeah, Kirk Cousins. Too, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't take sacks. He's willing to throw the ball downfield. He's got a cannon for an arm. Yeah. There are a lot of things to like, but you also see like some of the deficiencies. Michigan kind of exposed him. He's going to be 24 years old in May. Mm -hmm. And as you already mentioned, that injury history, like I, I, I cheer for a team. As you can see, I'm wearing a twins hat that constantly buys guys that are injured to Anthony D Sclafani or however you pronounce his name. It doesn't matter because he's never going to pitch an inning for the twin because his elbow is like, you know, uh, you know, shredded steak, you know, <laughs> Royce Lewis, all world Grass talent, knees. all hits a home run in his first at bat. We're ready to build the statue, severe quad strain, Ru next running, at, at running, the, running the, bases. the bases. Like, I don't want to do that. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater drops back and yeah. his knee explodes. Like, I know that's too, probably didn't, insensitive. Didn't the but... take a bunch of chances on injured guys too. Like Brandon wasn't Brandon Roy, Roy there. Brandon for Roy, bit? yeah, his knees were like he had Sam Bradford knee. Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam Bradford, another yeah. guy with knee problems. Like I don't need this in my life. I don't need. Well, you know, he had some knee problems, but we checked him out, and he's totally fine. In some cases, you get what you pay for, and I know the draft is random. I know that. Top, all four top quarterbacks aren't going to pan out. 1999, the last time the Vikings had the 11th overall pick, they took Dante Culpepper. You know who the three quarterbacks were taking ahead of Culpepper in that draft were? Uh, Tim Couch, Achilles Smith, and Donovan McNabb. Ah, you're on your game. Either that or you read my article, but no, nope, I didn't read it. <laughs> it's just a very memorable. I can see, I can see the Sports Illustrated cover right now. I think it was like Achilles Smith and Tim Couch. Because it was the first year the Browns were back, um, and they had the number one pick, and it was like Achilles Smith. Who's it going to be, Achilles Smith or Tim Couch? <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> I remember the Eagles fans wanted Ricky yeah, Williams yeah, they so booed bad McNabb. in that draft. Yeah, and they booed Donovan McNabb, who uh, wound up uh, leading them wound like up four uh, NFC championships. Let's see here. I, I we got a comment here. That was Bradley, that was. Go ahead. Um, that was the. Uh, the year where Ditka traded all of his picks for Ricky Williams too, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and how many times y'all watch Pinnix played this year in a regular season game at Washington? Probably not, but you have all that concern of his injury history. You didn't even know him in Indiana. Actually, I do. I remember the diving touchdown yeah. against Penn State. Um, so I know him. 
Yeah, uh, I've seen the guy, guy play. And actually at Indiana, his last year, he completed like 50 some percent of his passes. Mm-hmm. So there's a guy on our staff, Luke Parrish, who's from Indiana and he's an Indiana fan. So he's very familiar with uh, Michael Penix. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we know, we've known about Penix for, for a while. We're not just, you know, we're not just going off of uh, hot takes from, you know, Skip Bayless or something like that. We're, we're, we're not we dialing go. up the YouTube video. No, we're, yeah, we're, we're doing this for clicks as we sit here with, you know, as we, as thousands we ask of you viewers. to like subscribe and, uh, yeah. you know, check us out. Tell your friends, <laughs> right? Well, well, let's say, let's say the Vikings are like, hey, we, we're not really fond on Penix, right? Right. Let's say they want to move up in the draft. And you gave me a very interesting hypothetical. And I would also say they don't have a second round pick, so that could weigh into their decision making as well. Um, I think it was uh, Rick Spielman the other day, not the other day, but a little while ago, mentioned how uh, the Vikings might be a good fit for, fit for Spencer Rattler. Um, so you know, okay, that's the shit I don't want to happen. <laughs> that's but but it's from you know it's you know it's who it's totally coming possible. from. That's that's how he would think. Like going into this right. draft, he'd be like, oh, we're we're not going to get who we want at eleven, so let's just trade back and get more. We'll get we'll get eight seventh round picks, and then we'll trade back into the second round. Joe Milton's out there, you know. Kyle Rudolph thinks really highly of him. Listen, I just I drafted Joe Milton in my mock draft that I posted today. Um. Him and JJ McCarthy. Um, oh, just so you a, did RG three and Kirk Cousins yeah, all over to again to appease. Well, yeah, to appease uh, Kyle Rudolph mostly, but um, but yeah, I mean he's I with Milton. You, you get him in there. He's got tools. If uh, he could potentially be insurance for McCarthy, if it doesn't work out. Probably not. But uh, if not, you can just like Kevin O'Connell's like the ultimate politician, like rah 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 guy. He can boost up his stock and you get like a. I don't know, third round pick for him in the future. So, like, I, I have no problem with the Vikings drafting another quarterback l- later. Um, but yeah, the hypo- hypothetical trade. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you have two of them. The first one is you trade 11, 23, and a 2025 first round pick. The second one. For pick number four. Prepare right. is is this four? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if it was for like. Yeah, so I didn't this, mention that, did I? Is both of these pick number yes, four? Yes. Okay, yes, yes, okay, yes. okay. He didn't. Adam, my yeah, show notes are right. all off now. They, they right. you know, it's kind of like when Uncle Eddie fires up the microwave and Chris's vacation, and you know, pisses his <laughs> pants, and forgets his name for a couple hours. Um, he's so for pick number four, it's eleven twenty three and a twenty five first round pick, or move up in the draft. By trading 11, a 2025 third, Justin Jefferson, we're going to put Justin Jefferson with Kyle Murray. We're going we're gonna to take it by storm in Atlanta or Arizona, wherever the hell he's playing right now. Make sure you like, comment, click, subscribe. We gonna, we, I got cards that like this all day. Who's going to stop him? Who's going to stop him? <laughs> uh, Kyle Murray know, Kyle and Justin Murray. Jefferson. Kyle Murray and Justin Jefferson would be uh, probably a pretty good combo. Um, be fun to watch. But. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, I would really weigh trading Justin Jefferson. Um, this this I threw this out because this was like one be be one of the I don't know if the the Cardinals would do this, but if they if this was like an offer that they or the Patriots put on the table, I think the Vikings would have to seriously consider it because it not only, you know, not only do you not have to pay Justin Jefferson. Um, you would move up in the draft to get your future quarterback, and you would also keep your other first round pick, and you would keep your first round pick in 2025. So you would still have plenty of you know ammo to build your roster. You could even use that other first round pick to draft a receiver. Obviously, they're probably not going to come in and immediately replace Justin Jefferson, um, but make up for some of that production. There's a, as we've seen over the years, there's you can get a lot of good receivers and throughout the draft. Um, and then you know, just the Vikings were what, are they, what were they five and oh five and one without Jefferson last year? It just seemed like they were a more well-rounded team. This is not to say that Justin Jefferson isn't a good player; he's the best receiver in the league. But I'm just saying, like, it felt like Kirk Cousins, especially like the the pressure was off to just try and get Justin Jefferson the ball as much as possible, and he was able to just kind of spread it around and play more of his game. 
Um, so there's some of that in there as well. But yeah, if this if that kind of offer was presented to the Vikings, I feel like they should at least look into it and seriously consider it because it would. I feel like it would benefit them to to make a trade like that. So the pros. I listed pros and cons because mm-hmm. I, I think you keep your 2025 first round pick. And in this scenario, that could very well be a top 10 pick. So yeah. um, I don't know about the other positions in the draft. I know Shadur Sanders is the top quarterback, but Dion's going to pull a. Uh, yeah, D-line. but if you draft, but you're you're also moving up to draft a quarterback this year. Correct. So correct. Worry about correct. So, so like you don't have to worry about Dion being like, my kid ain't playing yeah. in cold weather. <laughs> well, we play in a dome, dude, but um, okay. Um, there, there is that. And then there's Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, who I'm out on as soon as he shaved his mullet. Like, oh, you know, man, give me a quarterback that can throw the game-winning touchdown at three and go play the Dodge County Fair at nine. You, you like, want him to look like Dan Feeney. I, I want him to look like I, I want him to look like Sean Williams Scott in old school. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Or he, what? I can't remember the job title, but he's got the tranquilizer dart. Yeah, and he's like, you're, neck. A, you're a fucking dart in your neck, <laughs> huh? Um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen it, but it's old. Um, and, and I probably just dated myself with that reference. But go watch it if you're younger. Twenty. Oh, it's over twenty years old. Right? Yeah, it's it, it came out in high school. Two thousand three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Travis Hunter definitely floats my boat though. Yeah. When, when you talk about draft prospects next year and, and you're definitely picking a direction, which is like one of my biggest pet peeves, like, dude, just don't do this competitive rebuild stuff where it's like half in half mm-hmm. out. Like if you're going to, you know, do this, go all the way and trading Justin Jefferson would be a direction. You have a deep receiver draft because mm-hmm. maybe you can get an extra pick back in the later rounds of this mm-hmm. draft and, you know, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, Lad McConkey, and uh, Troy Franklin could all be targets in that back half of the first round. But but here's the problem. You're losing Justin Jefferson, yeah. who is the best receiver in the NFL. And I know people people are getting all smart because, well, you know, Patrick Mahomes, he, he won two Super Bowls without Tyreek Hill and whatever. You are basically robbing Peter to pay Paul if you trade Justin Jefferson, because the whole idea of drafting a quarterback is that infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. Just, Oh yeah. Well you can have, I mean, I've said it multiple times. The best thing you could do for a young quarterback be like, Hey, if you're in trouble, see 18 over there, just (laughs) chuck it in his direction and see what happens. Like you might throw an interception, but you threw it to 18. Congratulations. That's, that's not a bad thing. Um, He's the first, second and third, option in this offense. And I, I mean, your thought process of trading Jefferson is just like somebody sitting at the blackjack table. Just you're on a heater, right? Cause you found Adam Thielen as an undrafted free mm-hmm. agent. Then you uh, drafted Stefan Diggs in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. You trade Stefan Diggs, who is a very good receiver at the time and freaking folk hero because of the Minneapolis miracle Mm -hmm. and you get Justin Jefferson because of it. So you're, you're like the guy at the blackjack table, 20 and just like, dude, hit me, hit me again. Yeah. Jordan Addison, like you're on a heater, but at the same time you could also, and I mean, I rip people for thinking this way with quarterbacks, but you know, you could make that trade, get something back and Oh shit. We have Laquan Treadwell now, or Oh shit. And I mean, I know Jordan Addison played okay when, Justin Jefferson went down. He had a monster game with Kirk Cousins. But if you don't hit on this quarterback and you trade Justin Jefferson, you're getting fired. And and like I said, you get what you pay for. Like, if it's up to me, I take the other scenario where I'm trading a 2024 first, a 2025 first, or excuse me, uh, I'm looking at, Another note here. Excuse both, me. Both first round picks this year and next year. Next year's first round pick. Thank you. So, so you're trading three first round picks. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Like even even if it winds up being, I don't think this team finishes in the top ten. Could it happen? Absolutely. Especially if you have a rookie quarterback. But I mean, if you take Drake May or JJ McCarthy with that pick, I I don't see that. I mean, maybe you have Sam Darnold out there and he fumbles around and sees ghosts for two or three games and you go, all right, that's enough of that. Go, go in there and like, show, see what you can do. I have a hard time believing this team 
absolutely flatlines to the point where you're going to miss that 2025 first round pick next year. So yeah, uh, they they added too much talent on defense to to be bad unless everyone gets hurt. Uh, they have Jefferson. They just had to sign Aaron Jones. Um, Hawkinson's coming back eventually. So like, yeah, like it's going to just be, it'd be, it's going to be hard. And, and if they play bad, like, what does that say about Kevin O'Connell and, and Quasey? That means they're probably on the hook for their jobs and in, in their final year. And they don't want that. So yeah, I think, um, when's the last time they finished in the top 10, like, or the bottom 10, I guess would be what? 2013. With Frazier, Leslie Frazier, yeah. last year. Yeah, and then Zimmer took over and took Barr at nine. Yep, and they haven't been in the bottom ten since. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, it's just not going to happen. But, yeah, I, I I personally, yeah, I don't, I don't want to trade Justin Jefferson. I enjoy watching him play. I like him playing in the Vikings uniform. Um, but I understand at the same time, like, this is a, a business – and tough decisions need to be made. I, I look at this kind of move where you would even consider trading him as like something that the Patriots did back in the day when they were like kind of just ruthless with stuff where they would move on from guys before um, it was a bad decision. And um, this is the kind of move that they would do. But at the same time, they had Tom Brady um, and the Vikings don't have Tom Brady. Because even if so- they draft a quarterback with this pick, there's no guarantee that they would get someone who's even better than Teddy Bridgewater. So let me ask you this question. Oh, let's boy. say you're at pick three. Yeah. You know, let's say the Patriots are calling. Yeah. Instead of trading Justin Jefferson, do you shop Christian Dersaw? Oh, yeah. You got to pay him too. A thousand percent. So, this, so especially, you... especially this draft, because this draft mm-hmm. is full of tackles. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, it would be easier to convince me or I guess you or everyone else that to trade Christian Darius than, than Justin Jefferson. Cause I feel like if, especially if you're looking at a quarterback like McCarthy or may, who has the ability to move out of the pocket and create, um, you know, their own situations, then yeah, I think trading Darius would be an easier argument to convince someone to do. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think I've been promised a bill of goods with a trade into the top three getting JJ yeah. McCarthy or uh Drake May. I, I mean or I think Sam those Darnold. are two. Or you could end up with Sam Darnold or you could end up with uh I'm just looking at guys that were drafting like the top three in the past. I was thinking of like uh who's the I don't know man. I've done the safe thing too long to just be like oh yeah oh yeah Michael Penix at 23 is fine whatever <laughs> we'll we'll see what works but at like, the same time yeah like I want some wrong dude those guys that flopped they didn't end up with a team like the Vikings that the way the Vikings are set up. Like I've seen a lot of people today come out and say like the Vikings are one of the, like the best situations in a very long time for a rookie quarterback to end up with, with with Justin Jefferson, Josh McCown is a QB's coach, Kevin O'Connell is your head coach, you know, a good offensive system. So like, I think they're, even if the quarterback isn't a franchise guy, he could be a Brock Purdy or be, someone who's just solid like a a Russell Wilson early in his career that just, you know, gets the job done. You don't need him to be an all pro every year. Just someone who helps you win games. So you just prefer that guy doesn't have an injury history of like (sighs) three torn ACLs and a shredded (laughs) shoulder and two shredded shoulders. And I don't know, 24 years old, just, yeah, just drink that, drink, drink that Minnesota water. It's done well for everyone else with their, their knees inside U.S. Bank Stadium. Joe Maurer can send over some Kemp's milk, too. They're changing their turf, though. Yeah. Maybe that'll help. (laughs) You know what they need? They need uh, the, what is it? Two-time Head Start I-94, 494 Head Start Athletic Trainer of the Year, Nick Paparesta of the Twins, to come on over. They they just fired their, I don't know, did they fire him or did did he resign? The Vikings trainer or director of sports. Oh, he got fired. He got, he got canned. He didn't quit. For what? Yeah. What, what happened? What, what did he do wrong? Uh, there were probably a lot of injuries that uh, Marcus Davenport. Yeah. Did that probably have something to do with it? <laughs> you, you couldn't fix Marcus Davenport, you son of a bitch. You're out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Well, right. let's see. We're at 30 right. minutes in the show. We're good. 
Uh, we fulfilled our contractual agreement. Finish night one. Yes, finish night one. Um, how about we finish night two? And we, oh my by God, it's Nick Marty's music. <laughs> what? Nick Marty is here. <laughs> Nick Marty is here. He's not I am ready. To be here. <laughs> I'm ready for this. I heard the big boys are done talking about serious stuff. And yeah. now we're ready for what I think most people have tuned in for. Yeah. Our mindless wrestling talk. Correct. WrestleMania preview. <laughs> this this is honestly, it's one of the most exciting weeks of the year yeah. for nerds like us. You know, NFL fans, you know, people tuning in right now who just want the Vikings talk. This is like getting a second Super Bowl during the year. You can drink, you can eat, you can make food, and you can just sit on the couch. But now it's not just one night. It's two nights. It's two nights of wrestling, fun, and in my case, a lot of beer. So, Adam, <laughs> you know, if you don't mind, I, I think we should switch gears here. All right. We can do that. Um, yeah, I would say the feelings are similar to that first week of free agency when you're just, like, excited about everything that could happen. And then you get – most of the time you get let down because um, things don't go the way you wanted. Then sometimes you get surprised. And sometimes some cool things happen. And uh, I think that'll be how this weekend goes, too. Let, let's just ease into the wrestling talk here. Oh let, let, we'll keep it a little Viking theme here. Cause it, cause I'm thinking about this, of course, Roman reigns in the main event of WrestleMania taking on Cody Rhodes. It's the rematch of last year's WrestleMania main event, a former Vikings training camp body, Roman reigns, by the way, it got me thinking. And I, and I kind of want your guys' thoughts. Who is the greatest Viking turned pro wrestler of all time? Is it Brock Lesnar? Or is it Roman Reigns? Uh, Nick, you can go first. Well, so I look at this in two different ways. When I'm talking a single one match talent, I think Brock Lesnar takes it. In a single match, one, you know, in terms of in-ring talent, I go Lesnar. But if I'm looking at the entire career and where Roman has gone these last three years, I probably lean more Roman now. If you had asked me this two years ago, I probably would have leaned Brock. Um, but for now, Roman. Yeah, I would say, I'd say Brock's maybe his skills in the ring are are better than than Roman's. I think Roman's more about the, I guess you could say theatrics. He's really good at just running the crowd and getting them to kind of be in the in the palm of his hand. Um, but that works today, and he's really good at it. Um, he's way better on the mic than uh, Brock Lesnar is because he actually talks on the mic where Brock Lesnar, they tried to do that for a little bit, and they're like, nah, you're not going to do that anymore. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would say Roman. I I think it's probably recency bias, and I, I don't think I was ever really a, a big giant fan of Brock Lesnar. Like it was cool when he first came in. You're like, whoa, who's this guy? And then it was just like, all right. Like there's nothing really much to him except for like he's a scary looking dude and he can just throw you through everything, which, you know, works well a lot. But I think Roman has a lot more versatility with everything that he can do in terms of in the ring and outside of the ring. So that's why I would, I would go with him. So obviously I would be remiss if I didn't quickly bring up, there are some allegations against Brock Lesnar right now. Oh yeah. Hopefully they're not bad, but um, I, I'm just going to say this is completely an entering conversation yeah, by yeah. me and maybe a little bit outside of it because the athlete Brock Lesnar, you know, outside stuff aside, one of the greatest athletes from the, I mean, he's technically from Webster, South Dakota, which is like two hours North of where I am right now or South Dakota. Yeah. I said South, right. And say North. Sure. Webster, South sorry. Dakota. Um, you know, the fact that he goes to WWE, he does all of these awesome just feats of strength in his first two years. Like, you think about superplexing the big show, beating The Rock at SummerSlam, uh, fighting Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. People want to forget that. But even his match against Eddie Guerrero at no way out the month before where Eddie Guerrero mm -hmm. won the WWE championship. Then he goes away. He wins the UFC title. I, I'm going a little bit out of order here. He goes to training camp, hasn't played football all that much, nearly meet, nearly makes an NFL roster. 
Then he just goes, all right, I'm going to go to UFC, win that title. I'm going to come back to WWE. And yeah, he's been a part-timer. But I mean, most of the matches that he's done outside of a couple of clunkers here and there, it's all been bangers. A lot of it has put a lot of talent forward. You think about Roman Reigns and where he is now. You know, if it weren't for like the whole return with Cowboy Brock a couple years ago, <laughs> you know, that was one of the instrumental feuds to put him where he is right now. So yeah. I, I think, and by the way, my first live wrestling event was at the Target Center, Monday Night Raw, and it was a dark match. It was Brock Lesnar and Sheldon Benjamin. Oh, wow. And Jesse Ventura was their manager. <laughs> wow. And Brock Lesnar did the shooting star press successfully. I wow. know at WrestleMania 19, he landed yeah. on his head, but he hit the shooting star press. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. So, wow. I got to go Brock Lesnar, but I do acknowledge our tribal chief. Roman when, Reigns. when was that? Like, like 2001 or two <sighs> June. When was I, was it a, a might've been a sophomore in high school. Soft. So yeah. Oh, two, oh, three, maybe, but yeah, it was Shooting before he was on TV. That was it. Was that his finisher? Yeah. They, they were a tag team. They were the Minnesota <laughs> stretching crew. <laughs> but that was Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's finisher was a shooting. St That's insane. That's insane. Um, <laughs> spectacle. He's an absolute spectacle. That's what he's oh, always yeah. been. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's how they sell. Now, him, his, right? now his daughter's and, doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. She's like a world-class shot put at. Yeah. Right now. She'll be, she'll be in WWE. And she yes. looks exactly like him. Like, yeah, they I look that's, very similar. That's, yes, yes. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so moving ahead, let's talk about the WrestleMania card. The main event, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns too. Like I mentioned, um, I guess we all want to know. I, I'll start with you, Adam, since Nick started last time. Is Cody Rhodes going to finish the story and win the Universal Title on WrestleMania Sunday? I think he has to, um, but I'm starting to have some doubts because um, I, I don't know. Like nobody ever thought Brock Lesnar was going to snap the Undertaker streak. People didn't really think Roman Reigns was going to lose last year or win last year, and he did. Um, and does Cody really need the title right now? Like I don't. He's he's like the hottest guy that's the like the hottest worker i guess you could say in the in the entire uh, company uh without the title so you know does he lose and then or like seth turns on him and costs him the title and then they have that feud and he, and maybe the the other title is his actual story that he needs to finish like there's so many different ways um but then again like he should just win it there's been so much build up uh for this rematch everything I'm just ready to watch, like, see how The Rock kind of gets his way in there and either costs Roman the match or does something. Uh, I don't know. I just very, very interested to see how, what kind of role he plays because I, I think he, he's going to be in there. I think you talk about the main event. I think the, the first main event is you got to worry about is, is Saturday night with the tag match with, with Cody and Seth versus Roman and uh, The Rock. And I, I think Roman and The Rock are going to win that. It'll be bloodline rules, and then, um, you know, the Rock will kind of just kind of enforce his his will on Roman, and and maybe not let the other guys help him. And I don't know. And Cody will get the job done, and then we'll have a, a Roman Rock feud by what SummerSlam. Um, so, I think Cody. I have my doubts, but I, you just I I don't know. It's building up for Cody, and it seems like it's gonna be that, but. You just you got to keep your head on a swivel, I guess. You never know. <laughs> what do you think, Nick? Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I, I would say it's, in my mind, it's it's seventy percent, it's seventy thirty in yeah. terms of I think Cody pulls it off. Um, in my own selfish world, my my second grade daughter, who's the biggest wrestling and Cody Rhodes fan on earth, if he loses a second straight year, oh, no. uh, and I get tears a second time, uh, <laughs> like I've never seen someone turn as fast on the Rock, and she's like she she despises him right now. Um, Did she watch last I, week? She uh, we did not let her watch. We oh, typically watch day after yeah. because it's uh, school nights, <laughs> and Dad Dad did not let the uh, the bloodiness come out. I told her about it. Cody so, got hurt. Um, yep. <laughs> it was bad. 
Yeah, said That's some bad words, know. and yeah. Uh, yeah. here we are. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, but but it's intriguing. Like they could go a number of different ways, yeah. which is what's always fun. I'm super interested in the first main event that first yeah. night. Like I don't know which way. I think rocking like it makes the most sense story wise to have rock and Roman win that yep. thing. But but I you know you never know, right? Um, and then what they do night two. Who else will get involved? Like. For something that seems like as much of a sure thing of Cody winning, there's a lot of like, how is it going to happen? Intrigue too. So I'd say about 70, 30, would I be like floored last year? I was, I was pretty shocked with the direction right. they went. Yep. I feel like I'm less confident in Cody winning this year, even though he probably is going to than I was last year, which is what makes, you know, this time of year so much fun. You know, Nick, I got to give you credit. At least you didn't. Uh, there was a video that came out after last year's WrestleMania where a dad had like a confetti cannon ready to go because <laughs> it was up late. So he didn't want his, you know, <laughs> kid had to go to bed. So he knew what happened. So he got this confetti cannon ready. And when Roman won, he fired the cannon and confetti <laughs> went everywhere. He's like, Roman wins again. And the kid goes, this is bullshit. What is yep. this? And like, yep. Ran up the stairs. Um, what a difference two years makes when it comes to the WrestleMania main mm -hmm. event, right? Because two years ago, you know, we had the battle of the Viking legends, Lesnar and Reigns for, I think it was the third time at WrestleMania. Now we have, you know, these two matchups, you know, everybody was kind of mad when they were going to go Roman Reigns against the rock. I think they can still have that match down the line. Potentially. Um, you also have, you know, I mean, it just adds intrigue. Like, is somebody going to make someone angry during that match? Is Cody going to piss Seth off and Seth's going to turn on him? Is The Rock going to smack Roman by accident? And that'll be a whole storyline thing. I, I mean, they've just built so many layers off of this storyline. And they have matches beyond WrestleMania. Like Adam mentioned, I think you have to do Cody Rhodes against The Rock at some point now. Like yeah. a one-on-one -on -one match because that feud has been so good. It's almost overshadowed what was supposed to happen, which is Cody against Roman. And when it comes to who's winning that match on Saturday, it's a hundred percent going to be bloodline rules. And it is going to be the most overbooked, insane oh, yeah. batshit ending that we have <laughs> seen in a long time. In a have wrestling you heard the match. rumors of like Stone Cold and John Cena, maybe mm -hmm. being involved. Like, yeah, like it's going to be, insane it's just it's wrestlemania 40 XL. Every, everybody sits there and they go well why would you want stone cold out there he's 50 no i want to see stone cold stun the rock when he's 50 just to yeah. see if he sells it the same way <laughs> see, see the rock bounce around the ring like a slinky just one more time would uh fully satisfied childhood chris um which other match are you guys looking forward to at wrestlemania we'll start with you nick yeah, I think the two that stand out for me is I think Drew is doing some of the best work in his entire career. And I was very anti Drew Seth about a month ago. We have just, we've seen it a couple of times already this year. And so when I was talking about it, I was kind of like, ah, like I get it, but he is like won me over. He, this last month, I love this new version of him. I think he's found his niche on the roster. He's this, this heel that does it in a little bit different way, but he still has this dominating persona about him and, and how they do that match with, with Seth's knee and, and is Seth going to take two losses? I mean, I think he's going to lose night one. Does he do two losses um, for another star that to me doesn't need a title, but is still pretty red hot right now. Uh, so I'm intrigued by that match. Um, I've always been a pretty big Bailey fan. And so selfishly I'm, like, I'm pretty excited to see that story come to an end. Not that I think it's going to be match of the night, but I'm just, I, I've always, I've, I've liked the storytelling that's gone with that match. Um, so I'm excited to see that uh, kind of come to, you know, probably at least the next step, if not the conclusion of the damage control thing. It feels like it's been the year of the faction. And then this next year is going to be the year of like the faction in fighting, right? Like all of these factions battling inside of it. So those are two that stand out for me personally that I'm, I'm pretty stoked about. Um, Damian Priest going to cash in on whoever wins that uh, Seth Drew McIntyre match, right? He has to, right? Can't just keep holding on to the briefcase. 
I don't know what the whole Judgment Day is doing right now. Like, yeah, that, what's that's... Dominic doing? He's doing his own. He's not even with them for a match, right? Right. Yeah, he's tagging <laughs> with Santos Escobar, and right. then you have Priest, who's hinting about cashing in. Yeah. Uh, Finn Balor got his uh, oh, yeah, bell so wrong. Yeah. He's got a big old tomato on his face. That that's in. And then I don't know the six uh, six pack challenge ladder match. For yeah, the tag team I, titles. That's what I that's what I want to see. It's gonna be fun. It's yeah. gonna be fun. <laughs> it is gonna be fun. Ladder matches at WrestleMania are always fun. Mm-hmm. Well, and you also have 12 people in this one. Yes. So I mean, there's probably gonna be a spot or two where everybody's standing right there to catch the other person, oh, yeah. and I hate that. But <laughs> at yeah. the same time, I want to see are is the team that wins, are they gonna grab all four? But be- I mean, what yeah, there's four belts hanging, two two titles, yeah. SmackDown and Raw. So are they gonna grab all four or can they get two? And then is another team going to get the other two? And that's how we split the belts finally mm. after, I don't know, two or three years or whatever it is. I am interested to see how all that plays out. Is Dom going to get bailed on by, by uh, Santos Escobar because he has no reason to stick around? Um, Rhea Ripley against Becky Lynch. That feud is starting to heat up a little bit. Becky showed up uh, on the MMA outer with she punched, Ariel Harawani. Punched Dom in the face pretty good there. Yeah, she socked <laughs> Dom in the face. Um, and, and then you have the money in the bank there. So I was going to joke the new match of uh, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits against the Final Testament. Yeah. I mean, at least it's a street fight, right? Um, are there, <laughs> is there going to be any panes of glass in the ladder match? Is anyone going to jump <laughs> off the, the top? Uh, have they have they gotten to that level yet? Or is that we got to save that for Netflix? Raw. <laughs> Apparently, that that might be a Netflix uh, Raw thing. It's still an insane spot that he did that. Mm-hmm. I'll mix in one more question for you guys, and then and then we'll kind of just recap everything. Um, if there is a surprise at WrestleMania, we mentioned Stone Cold, we mentioned John Cena. What, who, or what do you want to see at WrestleMania as a big surprise? Uh, I, I'm trying to think who's even like available out there right now who could even like make a debut or come back. I think Brock Lesnar would be the only one, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that would be something if Cody's in trouble and Brock Lesnar's music hits. <laughs> I mean, people I would love it. People would go oh, nuts, yeah. but I mean, it would kind well, of be like, okay. Uh, you know what? Is there an open spot in the in the ladder match, or is that are they all filled? I think they're all filled, but there's okay, rumors that one's going to open yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, because I was going to say they're in Philly, land of ECW. I feel like Dudley Boys in, the, in that match would uh, – make everyone go nuts so uh, are, are the hardys free i know matt hardy's a free agent now but i think jeff's still under contract with something's AEW. going on there yeah that's that's weird um mjf possibly but where would um, you even where would you even put him yeah that's... Put, like cody wins and then mjf comes out to ruin his celebration yeah. and i mean Let's be honest, half the, I mean, this isn't a slight. This is just me saying, I feel like AEW and WWE have different audiences. So I don't I know. Think, the people at WrestleMania, I feel yeah. like that's, that's those yeah, are It's a hearts. different crowd. It's a oh, different yeah. crowd. They would know who MJF is. Yeah. And they would pop very loud. Yeah. Um, For me, it's kind of like just, there's all these layers of betrayals. And so like, yeah. I want something to happen. I don't even know what that is, but if, I, if, if we're done Sunday night and no one has betrayed anyone or no one's cashed in <laughs> or there isn't like what I don't want to happen is just like everything to end normal. I want something in there, um, which I think is why the big feud, like there's so many layers of who's going to betray. I want someone to, to, to turn their back on someone else during here's, that match. Here's one we forgot to talk about. I think the Logan Paul match is probably going to steal the show. Oh yeah. Like Logan mm. Paul, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, like, People are probably gonna be talking about that. Um, There's gonna be some RKO that Logan does. Yeah, Kevin Owens is him, jumping off. Gonna of be yeah. this barricade or something. I don't know. They're gonna they're gonna bring in the Liberty Bell. RKO, and- yeah, RKO off the Liberty Bell. Uh, yeah, I think that match is gonna be. And then the, the Gunther match too with uh, with Sami yeah. Zayn. No one's really talking about that, but that'll probably be a good one too. Those two always put on a good show. So your overall excitement level for this weekend, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Hey, wh- wh- I, I got to bring up one more match. Oh, boy. Because this is what I'm also excited. Trick James. 
Oh yeah. Trick Williams against Carmelo Hayes at stand and deliver on Saturday afternoon. Um, that will be a banger because I, I think I just like the chant, you know, <laughs> whoop that trick. Whoop. Former Eagle, former Eagle trick. James trick Williams is a, for, a former Eagle. Yeah. His, uh, his real name. Um, yeah. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but yeah, he, I think he got like a tryout or something with the Eagles cause he played at South Carolina. There you go. The more, so, you know, yeah. overall so, excitement level for this weekend, gentlemen, what are you feeling? Uh, I mean, it's WrestleMania, so it's always got to be a 10, um, at least at first. Um, I'll text you maybe after night one, see how excited I am about <laughs> night two. <laughs> um, but no, I'm excited because uh, it's just, it's a, I'm glad that it's two days because when it was, used to be one day, it's just like, it was so long. It was like, mm -hmm. what, eight hours, seven hours? They were getting still, to eight, yeah. It's still long. It's like, what, four or five now each day, but but I feel like they have they have a lot more freedom to do more stuff that they want so i like the two days but yeah i'm all, i i like the like you mentioned like super bowl week and stuff i like yeah this this whole week these next couple of days leading up to it obviously i've raw tonight um but there's always like a bunch of really good interviews that people do before whether it's like with ariel hawani or or other podcasts or stuff and and that's that's the stuff i really like because you get to like learn more about like the actual wrestlers like becky lynch did her stuff last week but she had a book coming out so that's why she did that um <laughs> But yeah, 10, always a 10. Nick? Yeah, same way. I mean, I think uh, this whole weekend is a blast. And I agree The two nights, as someone who's, you know, been to multiple in live WrestleManias, like right. I remember the watching Taker HBK won. And after that match, the emotion, like we were so tired for the rest of that night that like we felt like terrible fans because we Where just was that? couldn't. That was Houston. Okay. That was Houston, and they 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 was kind of I'd say two thirds of the way through the show, um, and I can't remember what came on. If that was the uh, the the Jericho Punk match, I think for the title came on next. If I want to say that was, I think that was uh, Orton. I, no, Triple that was H. my yes. It was that was the Orton. Yes, the that was the Orton Triple H. That the Jericho um, Punk match was was I think Miami where we were there. Yeah where we were, it was right after the end of an era match with, with Triple H and Taker. That's why I'm mixing those up. A lot of Taker. Taker always <laughs> brought it. And then it was like, oh, you had two matches to like get your energy back. Um, but I, I love the two nights. Um, I think they've really done a great job. I'm, I'm a huge fan of long-term storytelling. I think Chris and I have talked on, you know, when I've come on before about how I was never a huge fan of the big moment, random, like I like long-term storylines. And I feel like so many of them are coming to a conclusion and I've invested in them and I care. Like I look up and down the, the card and I care about a lot of the outcome of a lot of these matches. Mm -hmm. There isn't a lot of like, Oh, I got to go put the pizza rolls in matches <laughs> right now. Like, I, I don't know. It's going to be like trying to pay my daughters to go do any tasks I need to. Cause I can't, I can't look away. So I, I'm always a 10. Yeah. You sprinkle in final four this weekend oh, yeah. uh, as well. Like it's just, I'm going to be sitting with my daughter all weekend long in front of a TV and I'm going to be the good dad for doing it. Cause I'm putting in dad <laughs> time. There's nothing better than that. Nothing better than that right now. I always think this is the best time of the year and I'm a little biased cause my birthday is uh, coming up in a couple of weeks here. But um, if the Vikings are listening, I'd like you to trade up for a quarterback. Just, <laughs> just saying a little birthday. Like that'd be awesome. Just go up to the podium. Like, for Chris Shad's birthday, we have made yeah. a trade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's Chris Shad? Who is this guy? What what the hell? But no, you have you have the NCAA tournament. You have opening day. You hope none of your you know game changing superstars get hurt. Then you go into <laughs> the Twins home opener. Then you go to WrestleMania. Then you go to my birthday, and then the NFL draft. And that is the greatest stretch of the calendar for me. Um, Nick nailed it on the head, the long-term storyline telling, you know, you think about the fact that this could very well be the rock against the Roman reigns and people basically threaten to riot over it. Not literally, right. but just, you know, complain online. Um, it, it's, it's just shows how much things have changed since triple H took over officially about three months ago. But I mean, Dating back to SummerSlam two years ago, when Damage Control came. Yeah, when yep. when Damage Control. I mean, you have a lot of 
storylines that have been built since then that yep. fans care they're invested in um you know you don't have the piss and vodka breaks that you used to have during a show <laughs> i'm excited mm -hmm. I, i'm excited to sit down like i said have a few uh you know <laughs> cool pops <laughs> have some pizza and enjoy the weekend because it is the greatest time of the year i'm excited to watch um the ladder match and have my wife get mad at me for showing it to my boys um, <laughs> what are you doing hey you, you guys want to try this yeah yeah Look at this. yeah let's do it uh, get a ladder dad come on all right we should probably wrap things up here adam <laughs> what's going on at the viking age oh uh let's see it's april now we're in we're officially in the month of the draft uh so as you've seen already today smoke season is in full effect with the michael Penix stuff who knows who knows um and obviously there'll be lots more rumors maybe we'll be talking about a trade next week or maybe they're waiting for the draft we'll just have to see and uh see what's happening there but whatever happens we'll have it covered at the viking age so go check that out at the vikingage.com follow me on socials at adam patrick nfl on twitter threads uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you can follow me as well at the real Chris Shad. Threw up a social video for the first time in a while oh, yeah. on the old Twitter and Instagram account today. So uh, check that out. But that's all the time we have for the Viking Age podcast today. We do this every Monday with a late week episode right here on the Viking Age YouTube channel. We're also in podcast form on Apple and Spotify the very next day. But however you consume us, make sure you rate, comment, like, and subscribe so you never miss a new episode and we can spread the word to the masses. For Adam Patrick and Nick Marty, I am Chris Shad. This has been the Viking Age podcast. <laughs>